Auto Crew Cab 2500. And Josh Cooley bought a new home, a brand new Subaru, and a $14,000 snowmobile. It wasn't what happened. It's how they all behaved. They all turned on me. They all tried to um, throw me under the bus. They all tried to sabotage my company. Um, their most desperate plea was trying to say that I was psychologically messed up. Um, after everything I've dealt with and everything I've seen and done um, over the last, say, two and a half years with this ordeal with corrupt bankers, corrupt attorneys, corrupt judges, corrupt police officers, um, people that were pulled in from my family and friends into this into this pyramid pool. I'd have to say I'm a pretty solid person. Um, did you get that, that, what I've did had they... to, that I've had to go through all this and experience all this and yet still... Here I am, hammer down, trying to save my family and my business, my life, and make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else in America. But what did Jeremy O'Neill say when you uh, tried to set up services, though, to circle back to that? You wanted to see a counselor, and what did he say? So Jeremy O'Neill and Matt Wadsworth literally realized that I had them because the first DV they served me, um, it was fabricated. And the most important thing was there was no history. And since Matt Wadsworth never did his job to come over and check out the home and the children, um, there was no there was no history of anything to serve a DV. Um, they then tried to do that by having my son, the day before his eighth grade graduation, brought in by Karen. Um, my little girl, Teslina, and I were literally trying to find my my son at the school because we were planning on setting up the, the entire picnic and everything for the entire 8th grade graduation to come out to the lake on the new road I built. Um, we couldn't find Wyatt. We looked all over and we couldn't find little Wyatt Kodiak Cummings. Um, for probably 45 minutes around the school, we finally went to the, the nurse at the school. Uh, not the nurse, but the secretary at the school. And she's like, I'm so sorry. Karen called and told Wyatt to ride to her work. Um, I called Karen and I said, Karen, come on, what are you doing? This isn't okay. Let the little boy set up his eighth grade graduation. Don't do this to him. This isn't okay. If you want him to see a counselor, I'm okay with that, but not right now. And definitely not the, uh, not the counselor that I advised my wife to serve or didn't advise. He actually helped fabricate, a, a domestic violence. Um, and now he's trying to get my son on record to have some justification for what he had done in the past. I contacted the hospital knowing that she was gonna be seen by a conflictual counselor, Matt Wadsworth. I let them know that I'd like my son to be seen by Ed Petranga, another counselor that had never met with anyone in our family. Um, and uh, they denied me. They denied that I would had my right to who would see treat my son. Um, they basically, kidnapped him into the room, locked him in the, in the center. And when my daughter and I came in, we were just like, what are you doing? What, where's my son? I'd like to talk to my son. They would not let me talk to my son. Um, they wouldn't let my, his little sister talk to him. Um, my daughter was pretty great. She was, well, dad, why don't we do this as a, as a family session since we're reconciling our family? Let's fix things, right, dad? I'm like, yeah, let's, let's go talk to the front counter lady. We go and talk to the receptionist and she makes two phone calls, one to Matt Wadsworth and one to Jeremy O'Neill. And they deny my daughter's suggestion. Um, my son comes out just so distraught, so upset. Um, we end up having to get up at four in the morning the next day just to make up for getting all this stuff ready for for the big barbecue and the bonfire and um, getting the boat ready and everything to take all the eighth graders out on the lake. Um, so then as time goes by, I find out that Jeremy O'Neill had helped my wife do a QuickBooks, um, um, cooking all of our books, working with, um, what was her name? Um, Monica Frost at Altman Rogers Accounting in Soldotna, Alaska, and Nancy Wheeler. Um, they basically cooked the books to hide all the embezzlement that had occurred with the realty sales and with merchant services and everything else. And they served a no trespass on you when you were, what, six or eight hours away yeah. and I was with you, nothing had happened. 
I called them up um, after I realized that Jeremy O'Neill and my attorney David Henderson had colluded with uh, Joe Moore of Altman Rogers. I called Nancy Wheeler up immediately, like 30 seconds after I had emailed over my tax return, requesting they do not send it in, that I wanted to have a, a second and third party look at everything. And she told me that she'd already sent it in. I'm like, what do you mean? I just sent it 30 seconds ago. That's what we do. And she was very defensive and weird. I was like, I told her that. I go, that's awfully strange. Um, can you please retract it? And I'll take it. She denied to retract my, my tax return. Um, and then later I found out through an officer by the name of Jameson Major um, that uh, the Altman Rogers in Saldot in Alaska, it's about 10 hours from where I live, had called in a no trespass order against me. I've never even been to their office. I don't even know where it is. All I do know is that Altman Rogers, Monica Frost, and Nancy Wheeler, and possibly Joe Moore um, are in trouble with the, the IRS regarding what they did with my tax return. So Jeremy O'Neill um, has inserted himself in my life. He literally, what's the COO of the hospital teaching a QuickBooks class to just two people, two people that are proven to have fraud in my company, fraud and hacking that had been reported to the Valdez Police Department. They did nothing about it. What's he doing inserting himself into my life? Um, so I was advised uh, by the courts uh, for, it's kind of what you have to do in a divorce court if you get child protection services involved and all this other stuff. And if they're claiming that I'm psychologically messed up, I wanted to make sure I did my due diligence. And so I went to the counsel center in Valdez, Alaska and went in to make an appointment. Um, they denied me that they could see me at my local hospital. I actually built the walls for the hospital. Um, I, I was the concrete form setter for the, for the hospital. Um, denied me to be seen. And this is just a receptionist. So I'm like, what do you mean I can't be seen here? I, absolutely. I know Ed Petranga. He's an amazing counselor. He'd be a great guy to meet with. Um, with everything I've been dealing with, it'd be awesome to have someone else to talk to about it and also have uh, something for the record for the court. Um, I asked her straight up, you need to tell me exactly why I can't be seen. She didn't have an answer. She made a phone call to uh, Matt Wadsworth. He denied uh, that I could be seen, but he also denied not to come out and explain to me what happened or even get on the phone to tell me why they can't see me. Also, the other woman, I don't know her name. She was, the, I think she's the acting director. She wouldn't uh, get on the phone and explain to me. Finally, the receptionist was so f flustered um, because I, de I demanded an answer. Um, she said that Jeremy O'Neill had, was, it was his day off, but he was going to come over to the hospital to talk to me about it. I walked out to the waiting room, the entrance of the hospital. Jeremy O'Neill came speeding into the parking lot, parked his car, and actually ran across the parking lot into the front entrance. I was like, hi, Mr. O'Neill, what's going on? Uh, you seem pretty flustered. No, 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 not at all. I'm like, well, let's sit down and talk. I really need to know exactly why I can't be seen in my local hospital. Um, I brought him into the council center waiting room where there was a camera. And he was so uncomfortable about that camera, he kept um, multiple times trying to leave the room and couldn't take his eye off the camera, didn't want to say anything. He was trying not to answer 